I work in an amazing team. The only argument we had in the past was about uh, merging source code directly to development branch, to the main development branch, without conducting a code review. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich heiße Maciej Piotrowski und ich bin ein iOS-Programmierer von Beruf und Mitbegründer von Swifting.io Blog. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maciej Piotrowski and I am an iOS programmer and co-founder of Swifting.io Blog. Today, I will be speaking about the importance of code review and reviewing all the things. Why so? Because for the past years, I've done hundreds of reviews. The other argument behind uh, speaking about this topic today is, because in my opinion, it is important. In my opinion, quality should be more important than frivolity. Reviewing a code will lead to have a firm and strong source code foundation, will distribute knowledge evenly between developers. And last but not least, because I've learned from an expert, I was attending a workshop led by Chris Eithoff, and he reviewed my code a few times. So I've learned from the best, and this is why I'm uh, speaking about this topic today. But uh, I want to start uh, this presentation with a real-life example, not strongly connected to the programming world. Uh, Jeff has told you that uh, I like music. So let's begin with music. I have a friend. She plays violin in a confusion string quartet. Music is great because it connects people, it can strengthen positive emotions and negative ones as well, and it can connect people just as it connected a friend of mine with her musicians. And to experience you better, what I'm about to say, I would like to invite one of my best friends on the stage and a co-founder of the Swifting.io blog. He is also a violin player. Let's welcome Bartłomiej Woronin. So, you know, before uh, an important performance, musicians go to the certain place and do a rehearsal of their performance. They unpack their instrument, instruments sit on a chair, they can tune it up a little bit, connect some com compartments to the equipment, and uh, that's obvious that musicians tend to play music. So Bartek will also play music in a bit. There are some other fancy equipment parts. I don't know how to call them, what to call them. Yeah, musicians finally bring out their notes and put it on a stand, and they start playing music. So when musicians uh, are rehearsing their music, they sit in a perfect circle so that everyone see each other faces, hear each other instruments, and they can check whether each instrument creates a perfect sound. That, uh, and if all instruments create a perfect harmony, 
during the rehearsal. Musicians do review their work. Look what you've just done. You were able to enjoy Bartek's music and review his work because his uh, before his next performance. Bartek, it was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> so musicians review their work just like programmers can review their code. I'm speaking for about, I don't know, five, maybe 10 minutes about code review, but I haven't even explained explained what it is. So code review is an action, a process, of finding and fixing mistakes overlooked during the initial phase of software development. Uh, it can improve quality of code base, and it can also improve skills of the whole development team. Uh, there are a few kinds of code review. Uh, first of all, we have peer review or peer programming. This uh, takes place when two programmers are working together very closely. One person writes code, the other one tells the first one what to do. And they're reviewing their work, their work sharing their ideas. We can also have a formal code review. This, is, this happens when we, for example, use an online tool that shows differences in a, provide, uh, differences in a source code. And we can comment on them, and we can also have a documented review process using an online tool. And for me, there's also a third kind of code review. I like naming it as show me your code review, and it happens when a person comes to me and asks me uh, for a help to solve a certain problem. Then I go to them, and I have a look on them at their monitor, on their, at their uh, source code, and I can review their work, share my ideas, maybe improve something. There are two aspects connected to code review. Those are ego effect and good code review culture. Ego effect is a psychological aspect. It makes people strive for excellence. It makes people uh, do their best at their work. Because if we have code review practices at our workplace, uh, Team members know that someone will be looking at their code, and they will strive for an excellence, and they will try to shine bright like a diamond, because no one wants to make junior-level mistakes. After all, our egos probably won't let us do so. And there is another aspect, and it's called good culture. Establishing good code review culture means that uh, in our organization, finding defects should be welcomed positively. No one is punished for finding a defect in our source code. No one is punished for making a mistake, because we are all humans. We make mistakes all the time. OK, how to introduce it at our work? We can benefit from ego effect and from good code review culture. And we can still have in mind that uh, good code review culture is not only about finding mistakes. We can always prize our peers for the job well done, for finding brilliant solutions. And uh, I will share with you my personal story. When I started work for my current company, I didn't know what unit testing and code review were. Maybe it's because I'm electronics and telecommunications graduate, and those subjects, subjects like these weren't, thought, weren't taught at, uh, at my courses. When I started working for uh, my company, unit tests 
were conducted by adhering to some test cases from an Excel file. We had, to, we had uh, test cases and test steps written down in an Excel file. We should follow the steps, uh, click through the application, and write down outcomes in an Excel file. And those were unit tests for us. But we realized that something felt wrong. So uh, we invited an external teacher to, uh, to teach us how to do unit testing properly. If you want to know more, to learn more about it, I know an appropriate person who can teach you uh, unit testing. So we can ask me about that during a coffee break. But after the training, we knew how to do it properly. So we need testing, done. And learning how to unit test properly also paid off, uh, paid off for me privately. One day, I received a coding task. And I was supposed to write an application that does functionality X, and I would get extra point uh, for writing some unit tests. And I had to send the results of the coding task by creating a pull request. When I read this line, I was asking myself something like this. Pull what? A pull request. So when you're using Gitflow, uh, when you are using Git repository, you can adhere to Gitflow. Usually, during the development, you have uh, the main development branch. You can commit your work to this main development branch and be a very happy person. But you can also diverge from the main development branch. And you can uh, create per-functionality branches on which you commit your code, work on new functionalities, and one time in the future, you can uh, think that your job's done. So you can create a pull request and use online tool, such as, for example, GitHub, where you can comment your work. You can create this pull request so other team members can comment on your work. And uh, you, know, you can, based on their feedback and their comments, you can create some patches to your source code so we can still work on this per functionality branch. And when all team members are happy, someone finally approves your pull request and you can merge it directly to the main development branch. So it felt very cool. I was really excited about uh, those pull requests, code review stuff. So I created a vision and actually, uh, today I want to somehow fulfill it and share this vision with you. I think that the world would be a better place if unit testing and code review were a standard, not an opt-in feature in iOS mobile application development. Things aren't always that easy when you want to introduce a vision at your workplace, at your department, team, you can encounter some obstacles. And you know, when you go to the project manager, he probably can say something like this. There are only, we have only three months and three developers to deliver a product. So this is a usual estimate at my workplace. So basically, you cannot do it. OK, but in my opinion, it will also take 30 minutes for a code review, and we will not be spending three days for a bug search. Then someone can tell you that we have only fire and forget projects, and this means we develop source code, we ship it, and we forget about it. We will never get back to the, uh, to the source code. Uh, Funny thing, at my workplace, we uh, tend to 
write applications for one-day events, for conferences. I'm wondering whether UIConf app has some code reviews conducted or unit tests. Yeah, but about those fire and forget projects, I like thinking about uh, those projects not as fire and forget projects, but review and learn projects. Because we can learn from others when they comment or on our work, we get feedback from them, from them. We can improve things. We can learn from them. We can also distribute the knowledge about project internals evenly uh, to other team members. But finally, someone says, there's no time. We cannot do it. Uh, and I will quote Yoda from Star Wars, The Empire Stri Strikes Back. There is no try. I mean, I will cross out the first part of the sentence. There is no try. And I would add, like in old Nike adverts, just do it. It will pay off in the future. But it takes too much time, I know. So, uh, do you know how much time it takes to deliver a drug to market? Is it one year? Three years? It's even more. Uh, according to Medscape.com, it takes about 10 years on average to uh, put a drug on shelves in a pharmacy. So, is 30 minutes too long for conducting a code review? All of the drugs are subject to FDA and EMA regulations. FDA stands for Federal Drug Administration, uh, Food and Drug Administration, uh, and it's a US uh, entity, and EMA stands for European Medicines Agency. And it's a European committee that uh, does uh, something with drugs. So every drug is a subject uh, to regulations of FDA, either FDA or EMA, and every drug takes part in a clinical trial. Clinical trial assesses properties of a drug. It checks whether a drug actually works, and it consists of three phases and one post-market phase. And this is why uh, it takes so much time before a molecule becomes a drug that can help people. And surprise, surprise, even software that takes part in business processes connected to clinical trials or drug manufacturing needs to be validated. There are certain regulations for drugs and there are certain regulations for software. And software validations are processes that uh, that check whether software does what it is intended to do. And those also consist of unit tests and code reuse. Speaking about FDA, there is a company called 23andMe, and recently I've received a gift. It was a DNA collection kit. So you provide your saliva sample to the company, to the 23andMe company, and they can check 23 pairs of your chromosomes, and they can tell you uh, from which parts of the world which parts of your DNA come from. And uh, when they kicked off their business, uh, after kicking off their business, they also had to cease the business for three years because they needed to adhere to other uh, FDA regulations. And I was recently uh, recently uh, filling in some uh, polls on their website that can help in their studies about human genome and human DNA. And after uh, finishing one of the polls, I've read the statement that uh, their studies are published in peer-reviewed academic journals. So I said, wow! Even they use peer review. 
And actually, this is what, uh, also what we do at Swifting.io. When we are about to publish a work, an article, we use Gitflow. We create a separate branch for our article. A person works on an article. Uh, we create a pull request so that we can comment on the work. And finally, someone approves it so we can publish our work on the website. It's not, not everyone do it, unfortunately. So let's imagine a story. We work in a company that has a lot of work. We are a software company, but we cannot deliver as much work as we want to. So we hire an external vendor. We give him tasks, and after three months, uh, the external vendor comes back to us with a delivered solution, delivered software. But there was no surveillance from our side. So we didn't know exactly what they were doing. And our developers are, got access to a repository, and they started flicking through source code. And what they could do is only start pulling off hair uh, of head, uh, because source code is crappy. There is no use of it. You have, we have to start from scratch, because the app hangs when you open it. It crashes from time to time. There are certain tasks on main thread that shouldn't be done on main thread. And it's a mess. And we are very sad. So should we review our work? Maybe on a daily basis, we are not we do not work on a life-saving software. Maybe we do not navigate through 7 million lines of Boeing airplane code. And maybe we are just not involved in projects that send human into space. So why the hell should we review? In my opinion, we should review because we can learn from each other. We can learn best parts from our team members. We can improve ourselves. We can Im improve quality of our source code. We can learn best tricks. We can teach others. We can reduce bus factor of, uh, of a project, because knowledge about project internals is distributed evenly. And if we happen to write life-saving software, or software on which one's life depends, one day we'll be ready, because good habits stay with us. I know we're in cosmos at the moment, but let's get back to the Earth. If you're about to introduce code review or unit testing, at your workplace, you can try doing what I did. I did a prank. I wanted to use code review and pull requests, so I developed functionalities for an application on a separate branch, and I created a pull request and asked my peer to review my work. So. Uh, if you did the same, maybe one day it will become a standard at your workplace. And maybe one day the only argument you will have in your team will be about merging source code directly to the main development branch without conducting a code review. Just review all the things. Thank you very much. Oh, and by the way, this presentation was, was also reviewed uh, dozens of times. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to take questions? Do you want to take questions? Oh, yeah, I can. So if we have any questions, um, Maciej will take some questions. So I know I have one question, because I do neither tests nor reviews, because I'm a terrible, terrible programmer. 
Um, is there one I should be doing first before the other reviews or tests? Uh, and it's okay. In my opinion, you should do both at the same time. Oh, don't say both. I can't, I can't do both. So you need to test because Pavo is on okay. uh, on the audience. All right. I'll start with tests then. I'll put that on my list of things to do. I'll get right on that. I guess everybody wants coffee. There's coffee, there's probably tea, there's water, there's other things, perhaps. Yeah, and we will continue at 11.50. Um, there will be a Firebase workshop in the room five, if you're interested. Otherwise, we have a main conference track as well at 11.50. Continuing here, you can consult the apps, you can consult us, have fun.